Hello, welcome to Connie Martinson Talks Books. I have a treat because it's been said living well is the best revenge, but living an interesting and fascinating life is even better. And that's what my guest Monica Lewis has written about in Hollywood Through My Eyes, The Lives and Loves of a Golden Age Siren. And indeed, welcome, welcome, Monica. Thank you so much for having me. And I loved your book Thank because you. you are so honest about so many people and things. So let's tell our friends about little Monica, born in Chicago, father and mother both in music, and a brother, Marlo. And a sister, Bobby. And that family lived for music. And you moved to New York where, again, music is your life, and you start to do nightclub work. And radio. I started, you know, somebody asked me the other day, what, what did you do before television? I said, we didn't have television. We had radio. Yeah. And, of course, now radio has a different connotation. But in those days, that was it. And then yeah. once a month, maybe you went to a movie. Yeah. You know. And then with the advent of television, um, everything changed. And the world opened up, and it became another. The whole century was so exciting. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's music that satisfies. Yeah. We were on the air for a long time. Per Perry Como, Joe Stafford, and uh, a guy named Johnny Johnson and I were on all week at night. And in those days, you had to do your radio show twice. Yeah. Because oh, the change you, you of the three do, hours. Yeah, you'd do it yeah. in New York, and then you'd wait three hours and do it again for the West Coast. <laughs> Did you have a favorite song at that time, Monica? Oh, I just felt so lucky to be singing. Uh, in the beginning, I was so nervous. I was afraid to do a ballad because I didn't yeah. think I could sustain it. So I'd sing real cute, you know, yeah. little up tunes. Yeah. And then finally, I got more confidence and yeah. did love songs. Benny Goodman was a good friend. He was wonderful for me. Uh, that story was really remarkable. I was working on a radio station for $5 a week on Saturday, and uh, Leonard Feather, who wrote lots of stuff about jazz, he's yeah. considered a great, you know, he was a uh, uh, critic and uh, commentator on the whole world of jazz. He was a friend, and he called and said, Peggy Lee eloped with Dave Barber, who was the guitarist yeah. in Benny Goodman's orchestra at the Astor Roof, and he needs a singer tonight. You have to be there at 3 o'clock. I said, okay. So I went. Yep. There were 300 girls. And my knees were shaking like you can't yeah. believe. <laughs> and uh, he would stop each one after eight bars if he didn't really like them, thank them, you know. But he let me sit, finish my song. Yeah. And he said, okay, kid, come back at 7.30 tonight. Okay? I said, I ran home, yeah. and I said, Mama, I'm going to sing with Benny Goodman at the Astor Roof tonight, but I don't have anything to wear. Yeah. So we rummaged through everything, and a friend of my big sister had a dress small enough for me, and yeah. that was it. And I sang yeah. with him that very night, yeah. nationally. Th that had to have been, you know, when you say, well, of course, we should say during that period you had dated Herman Woke. And I kept thinking, Marjorie Morningstar. Yeah, there's yeah. a story in that, too. In the movie, uh, they called the, the actress, changed her name to Mae Wynn. Uh -huh. And that was really... Your original name. My, my name was Mae, yeah. and we changed it to Monica when I was 17 or 18 because it sounded more grown up. Yeah. <laughs> Another man who certainly cared about you and was a little uh, Ed, <laughs> Ed Sullivan. Mm -hmm. uh, he made a big difference in, I guess, coming into TV, but you made a big difference for his life. I would say so. I yeah. introduced him to my brother. Yeah. My brother was in advertising, and my brother was brilliant. 
And I was working with Ed at those State Theater Harvest Moon Ball, which was a thing they did every year in New York. And uh, Ed would have a ventriloquist and a singer, you know, a variety show, kind of little in a little way for between the movies. And uh, my brother came to pick me up, and my brother was gorgeous. Handsome, handsome, handsome. And Ed said, who's that? You know. And I said, it's my brother. He said, oh, sure. Yeah. I said, no, really, come and meet my brother. Yeah. And he did. And my brother sort of sized him up and said, uh, we should talk. They made a date for lunch. And my brother Marlowe said to him, theater is losing all of its people outside of the legitimate Broadway theater. Uh, we're not going to have any of this. Television is it. Yeah. And I want to create a variety show where people can come to see what you do in a f 20 minutes here yeah. in a real show. And you could be the host. And Ed said, I can't sing, I can't dance. Marla mm -hmm. said, I know all the things you can't do. Yeah. I know how to put on a show. And I will, we will get the talent, and people will love it. And you'll just be every man, yeah. impressed with your guests. Show made history. I was on the first show with Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, Oscar Hammerstein, and Richard mm -hmm. Rogers. And we didn't even have the proper camera equipment. Yeah. We each got about 25 or $50. Somebody got 50 and I only got 25 But we did it, yeah. and it's the longest running show that has ever been on television. Yeah. You even talked about how you had to put your face on the, uh, the, the wall, really on the floor, <laughs> in order to get the light and for the camera to get the right uh, It was look. pretty funny. I, I, had, I had a bouquet of flowers with a mic in it. Yeah. And I'm going, I'm in the mood for love. And the camera, they didn't have the long dolly where yeah. they could come in. The guy is on his knees. I'm on my knees. Yeah. <laughs> and we did it, though. Yeah. We were pioneers. Yeah. Uh, isn't that marvelous how to be? It's something in the beginning where y you make it work. Yeah. Yeah. We made it work. The other part, I kept saying, why did she leave MCA? You come out to Hollywood, and someone has seen you and wants you at MGM. But they want you because we can make her another Lana Turner. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah. Well, the real back of that story is my dad, whom I loved very much, had had a heart attack, very severe. It was a very cold winter, and I thought that it would be a good idea to get my mom and dad out to California and in the sun and rehab, in a sense. Yeah. And I was willing to make that dreadful contract, which I did, for two years to live out in the sunshine and be out here and lose a lot of money. They didn't pay me what I was earning otherwise. Because you were really a star yeah. in the nightclub circuit. Yes. The Little Club, Billy All Reed. Yes. Uh, yeah. And... Uh, my records were going like crazy. I was selling yeah. a lot of records, and I was doing very well. And I made this awful contract, but I lost money, so that was okay. It wasn't okay, but I mean, I dealt yeah. with it. But they also prohibited me from making any money on the side. Yeah. In other words, I couldn't go off for a weekend and pick up a lot of money singing at a fancy hotel or anything. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do anything. Weren't you also, though, publicizing or one of the women for a, a product at that point, Oh, you're too? talking about Chiquita Banana. Yeah. They couldn't touch that. Yeah. There were, that was a viable, that was so um, beyond, they couldn't prohibit me from finishing up my contract. I worked, I was Chiquita yeah. Banana for 14 years. Ah. Oh. Oh, um, do you remember what the song, of course I'm you remember. I'm Chiquita Banana, and I come to say, 
Bananas have to ripen in a certain way, and when they're flecked with brown and have a golden hue, bananas taste the best and are the best for you, and it goes on and on. Oh, <laughs> no. bravo. Yeah. <laughs> so all the time you're trying, they're making you into a second Lana Turner. Yeah. And, and really, you were so much more, really more beautiful being Monica Lewis than being secondhand Lana. Well, she was very sweet. We were in a parking lot, I think, at one of the department stores. I was, uh, had just, I had never dr driven. Yeah. Living in New York, I was on the subway know. to the yeah. airplane. So I had learned to drive, driving from Sunset Plaza Drive out here to Culver City to MGM. Yeah. I knew one way to go and get back. And, uh, but I finally discovered a store and I went shopping and Lana was in the parking lot and she walked over to me and she said I'm Lana Turner and I said I know she yeah. said I was at your opening and I love the way you sing and we have all your records and honey she said don't let them do this to you I said well I don't know what they think they're doing she said no it's very clear I'm pregnant yeah they think that I'm not going to come back and do what I do but I don't do what you do. I don't know how to do what you do. And she said, you're going to work, work out to be a good actress. If they give you a good yeah. part, you'll learn to be a good actress. That's all. That's the story. She said, she said you've been performing since you're a yeah. kid. And you're still a kid. And I said, I know, but I don't know what to tell them. She said, just tell them you want to be you. Yeah. That's easier said. Done. Didn't exactly get yeah. through. <laughs> yeah. But you do talk about your opening night where at Macambo? Yes. Oh, that had to, you must have was wanted. It was a disaster. Yeah. Somebody gave you a pill to sort of calm you down? Calm, or? They said this would calm your stomach. I was yeah. having flutters. And uh, it calmed me down, so I was like a bit of a zombie. But uh, obviously the second night it didn't matter because we were packed and... Uh, very successful. Yeah. I got what I wanted out of it. Marvelous pictures in this book and a marvelous picture of Ronald Reagan. And the fact that you were both single at the time. Yes. And the fact that how you you really got to know him and he fell in love with you. True. Yeah. <laughs> fact. Yeah. What kept you from marrying him? I liked him very much, and we had a good time. We had a great rapport. And he gave you a marvelous uh, medallion. Medallion that is in many of the pictures here that was St. Uh, Genesius. To guide your career. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful piece, yes. Yeah. He had it made. And, uh, well, he, I wasn't ready. Be honest, mm -hmm. I wasn't ready. And uh, I just thought, you know, we were wonderful friends. We had a romance, no question about it. But I was not ready to be married, perhaps at all. And I know that I wasn't ready to marry him. Yeah. And along the, about like running simultaneously, I met a young man who was a screenwriter and uh, oh, yeah. I fell madly in love yeah. with him, L Liam, which finished yeah. off the Reagan yeah. thing. Liam O'Brien, yes. who was known for having all of his girlfriends become Catholic. I know. Yeah. And you went we through We don't want to get through that. Yeah. 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 That was, yeah. I, I uh, lived through three and a half, I was engaged to him to marry him for three and a half years. Yeah. And I had to battle my way through a lot of stuff and finally got the dispensation from the Pope himself to allow me to marry him, at which point I was so thoroughly exhausted. Yeah. And as I say in the book, I had broken everybody's hearts, including mine. Yeah. And so I just couldn't go through with it. But Ronald Reagan calls you just before he's going to marry Nancy, and he wanted to get together for like one last drink. I think it was just an offer of friendship, and yeah. I think he wanted to talk, and he wanted to know how I was doing, and yeah. he wanted to, it's known as tying up loose ends. <laughs> and now there are 
the other pictures. Oh, those are great. That's from Nelson Riddle, the great orchestrator and arranger. Yeah. And uh, all the records I did. I don't know how many records I did in my life. I have no idea. Yeah. It's endless. And also at Frank Sinatra. And but he treated you well. I mean, you said, look, oh, yeah. I'm a kid. I'm not interested. Yeah. Frank was like a big brother. Yeah. And probably it was a much better relationship than anything else would have been. Would have been, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm looking for the picture of the wonderful Jennings Lang. Oh, he's, yeah. he was the best. Yeah. He was the best. I lucked out. Yeah. I married Jennings Lang, and I had the best marriage. Everybody said it won't last two weeks. Forty years. Forty years. And uh, and a darling man, your son Rocky. My yeah. son Rocky, if you don't mind my saying so, is the best son that ever lived. He's the best father, and I had a great father, and he had a great father. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, and we yeah. were a triumvirate. That's yeah. Papa, Mama, and Baby Bear. And you traveled. It was really a precious life. Fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Jennings was so brilliant without ever being pompous. Yeah. He was so strong without ever seeing in charge, you know. Yeah. He didn't play uh, MCA big agent. No. Yeah. And he was so creative, and he loved music, and he loved art, and he loved sports, mm -hmm. and he, he embraced life. I mean, you really had a... Perfect. I mean, it's the, uh, the sort of life that people read about and say, oh, I would give my right arm for that. You had the beautiful home with the tennis court, with the help, and with the parties. And evidently, for you, that was great creativity. Oh, I loved it. I said, yeah. this is going to be the best show of my life. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a lot better than saying, well, how many people came tonight? Who, uh, how do I handle that drunk? Or, yeah. you know, there's a heckler back there. But I do have to say, I read it, and again, the honesty. A little bit bitter at MCA how they treated Jennings. I don't know. It's all sort of so In the past, over. yeah. You know, they, they did whatever they thought was right. Uh, I find that in business, uh, people do what they have to do. They think when you're hot, everybody's your friend. Oh, yeah. And it's sort of like when you're the widow, the first month, everybody calls you once a week and says, how are you, darling? You know, mm -hmm. how are you holding up? Yeah. You know? And then it's once a month, then it's every three months, and then it's, they don't have a call again. Yeah. And it's that sort of thing is also in business. When you've got a hot picture or a hot script or something, everybody wants to be right walking yeah. with you and I'm walking and being seen with you and talking to you and pretending they're whispering when they have yeah. nothing to say and so <laughs> forth. And yeah. uh, if you're not doing that well or you're ill, they do the uh, original visits and then they go away. Yeah. And of course, Jennings, unfortunately, Jennings had a massive stroke. Yeah. And I took care of him for 13 years. I didn't realize it was that long yes. till I read the book. Yes. Yeah. And he never lost his sense of humor. He never lost his quest for living within yeah. the framework of what he could do. In a funny way, it, during those 13 years, it must have been where he, he's come home to me, mm. where you could have him yeah. 24 hours a day and the phone didn't ring that would take his attention away. Uh -huh. Well, I didn't see it that way. I think that someone said once to me, how do you do it? And I say, how do you think he would have done it for me? Yeah. Because he said to me very early in the marriage, wear me like a cloak. And he was the first person I ever, everybody in the past to me was a bit needy. Yeah. And he wasn't. Yeah. He wanted to 
embrace and take care of the umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. And but made it fun. Yeah. And we had a great life. Yeah. But even those 13 years could uh, had to have had a great deal of love that was going on that when you're running around doesn't always come out. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. Because there's like you and me kid. Yeah. It's that, you know. Yeah. That, but then again, we also had Rocky. And yeah. Rocky was so attentive. Took him to the baseball games. Took him, got the handicapped seats. Yeah. They went to all the Dodger games. Dodgers were very hot for a few seasons, you know, that we really were doing well. And uh, just many, many, many things, many things. I kept him occupied. What's the song you would sing to him in those years? Mm. Make someone happy was my song for yeah. him, not for, I mean, for me, the words were make someone happy, make just one person happy, and yeah. you will be happy too. And that's sort of been my slogan for myself. Yeah. And now I know that you built a house in back of your son's house. Yes, I'm in and his I, backyard. Yeah, that's so wonderful that you have the daughters, because Rocky has three daughters. Yes. And one of them sings. Exactly, Nikki. Nick, does she sound like you at all? No, she has, she has a, a much bigger range than I had. I had a good range, but she can go very, very spe spectacularly high um, in, in opera or in that uh, more classical area. She would be probably a color, could be a coloratura, but she's yeah. not. She's very contemporary. And I love That's this a nice picture. picture. Autumn leaves. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a nice picture. Well, the book has got a lot of stuff because, you know, I lived through almost all of the 20th century. Yeah. People don't realize, the air. we didn't have an airplane until 1917, and I was born in 1922, five years later. And? And there he is. Yeah. That's Jennings. And that's me doing the stunts in uh, Earthquake on top. Yeah. And I can't see, oh, oh that's roller coaster on the bottom. I used to take these little parts uh, later on in life, because uh, I didn't work for a number yeah. of years, uh, like a good luck charm in some yeah. of Jennings' pictures. Th well, that was great, because it gave you a second career. It was fun, too. Yeah. No yeah. responsibility. I mean, I wasn't doing Medea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you were also singing at that time, yes. too. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't sing again for quite a while until after Jennings was sick. Yeah. But I thought that was the best way to get the family back on their feet, to feel that you have to march on. Yeah. And so I took Jennings in his wheelchair, ringside. Yeah. And after 25 years or so, I went back on the nightclub circuit. But I had Jennings at every show. And now do you sing at, say, one of the Sinner Grills? Um, I haven't done anything live in... Uh, a number of years. I did a tribute album to Jennings, and uh, he died in 96. Mm -hmm. And I did a lovely album, I think, of a, sort of, I wrote the story of our life in song. Oh, beautiful. And it's a yeah. nice, nice CD. That's really, the only thing this book is lacking is a CD of Monica Lewis yeah. singing. So I hope in maybe the next edition, they will put it in. We had talked about that. I think there was some impediment. I don't know whether it was legal, because I'm not yeah. a business person. You know, I, yeah. did, I didn't, couldn't handle those things. But I think that was brought up. And uh, they found there were too many publishers, and yeah. there were people with copyrights. And I, I'm not quite sure what it was, but the idea had to be abandoned. It well, would have been great. It would have been great, but they can still go and order them from Amazon. Will you autograph you can get the my book? book? At Amazon. Thank too. you. And if you'd like to know what else we've been reading, visit me on the web at www.conniemartinson.com. Support your local library. Go in. There are some other really interesting books about Hollywood. Mr. and Mrs. Hollywood by Connie Brook, uh, all about how MCA was bought and how the stocks went. Very interesting technical book about 
the Hollywood business scene. Then, of course, there are other books about Luella Parsons and about Clark Gable. But the business side is very interesting, too, about Hollywood. Meanwhile, as I said, support that library. Take a child with you. They will never forget where they were when they got their first library card. And uh, what did a library mean to you growing up? A lot. Uh, we went to, that's what we did. We all were, had library cards, yeah. and we all were studying, and we always read. And of course, with music, you always had music around that always. house. Thank you so much for coming, Monica. It's been a really a thrill for me to have you sing, to read the book. <laughs> it's been great. Thank you. It's a nice book. Beautiful book. Thank you. Thank you. Go to the library, folks. Thank you.